Today's video will demonstrate how to take an English problem definition and turn it into pseudocode. Hello, I'm James Helfrich. Pseudocode is a tool that allows us to translate English design ideas into a specific programming language, which can then be compiled. This video will demonstrate that process. The first thing we have to note is that pseudocode is a vehicle. It is not actually a programming language, and it is a vehicle that transports our high-level designer ideas into the programming constructs that the computer needs. So first of all, we start with an English or natural language description, and we got to turn it into machine language, because remember, a CPU can only understand the ones and zeros that are a machine language. Now, fortunately, about 50 years ago, they started inventing programming languages, and programming languages translate something that's pseudo-human understandable into the machine language we need. But the question is, how do we make that jump from English to the programming language? And that can be quite a big jump. So pseudocode begins in a very English-like format, where all the constructs are in a way that a human can understand. And then as we iterate and massage the ideas, we slowly introduce programming constructs until it becomes very much like a programming language. And from that point, it's an easy translation from pseudocode into the programming language. We'll demonstrate this by taking a look at the bubble sort. Now, first we'll take a look at our English description. The bubble sort is a comparison sort algorithm that repeatedly swaps the adjacent elements if they are in the wrong order, finding the largest item, and then the second largest and so on until the array is sorted. Now, we're going to start with this English description, basically copy paste it from our problem definition, and then we're going to elaborate on that by introducing a little bit more detail. First, the largest item in the array is put in the end, then find the next largest and put in the next spot and continue until the list is sorted. Do this by starting at one side of the array and moving to the other with each spot, swap the adjacent elements if they are in the wrong order. Now, both those English descriptions say the same thing, but the second one is just a little bit more detail. We're fleshing out a little more details. All right, now the next step is a little bit pseudocode, a little bit English. So we're gonna say for each spot left to right, that's very pseudo pseudocode-ish. And then we have the English description. Then we're gonna say, if it is bigger, that sounds like a programming construct, so that's pseudocode. And notice how I'm using a fixed width font for the pseudocode and usual proportional font for the English part. Now we're gonna do a little bit more pseudocode for I spot, actually name the variable from end to beginning. End to beginning is kind of English. For I check, once again, pseudocode, I have the actual variable name from beginning to I spot. And then if array of I check is less than array of I check plus one, that's very pseudocode, but then swap the spot, that sounds a little bit English. So I'm still a mixture between pseudocode and English. One more iteration, and now I've worked out every detail. For I spot is number elements minus one to one. For I check is zero to I spot minus one. If they're in the wrong order, then swap them. Now we have all pseudocode keywords. For, for, if, we have the assignment, we have actual variable names, the actual equation, all the details have been worked out. The final step is to convert that pseudocode into the actual programming language. Now, in this case, we're using Python. And notice Python has the colon after the for and the for and the if. Python has a really strange way of doing for loops. We have to use the range iterator and we can swap using a tuple. Now, of course, if I was going to turn this into C++ or Java or JavaScript or something, then the syntax would be different, but the pseudocode is designed to be language independent, so it should be equally easy to convert the pseudocode into any programming language of my choice. Let's take a look at a second example. I want to write the pseudocode to compute an individual's tax burden. So I'm going to start with the English description that was copy-pasted directly from the IRS's tax form. Now, it was 2006 tax form, so these numbers are out of date, but the idea is the same. If income is between 15,000 and 61,000, then the tax is 1,500 plus 15% of the amount over 15,000. Okay, so I'm gonna start introducing some pseudocode and the range between 15,000 and 61,000, I can use the less than or equal operator. And this is clearly an if statement. So all that is properly pseudocode. And then I'm gonna say tax is 1,500 plus 15% of and then the amount over, that's not pseudocode. That's still English. I have not yet worked it out, but that's okay. I'll do one more iteration. And now I have that particular line completely flushed out with pseudocode. So tax is 15,000 plus 15% 15 times income minus 15,000. Okay. Now this is just one tax bracket. I need to fill it in for all the tax brackets and wrap it in a function. And now I've worked out all the details necessary for the algorithm. The last step, of course, is to turn this into my, my programming language of choice. And once again, I'm going to use Python for that. 
def, because that's how we define functions in Python. The function name, compute tax of income, colon. Now, of course, Python needs to have a doc string for the comment block. I can use the less than or equals operator with a colon after for the if statements. And then I have to say 10% is 0 0.10 times and then return tax. And I have everything worked out. This is example 2.1 and 2.2 in the pseudocode chapter of the software design textbook.